Welcome to Living Hope Podcast with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join me for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is Touching Jesus. After Jesus set the demonized man from Gadara free, he returned to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. They landed at the northeast corner of the lake, next to the most fertile plain known today as Nafganasor. In those days, the region was called Gennesaret. One of the towns in the region is Migdal, the home of Mary Magdalene. Mark wrote, When they crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. Mark chapter 6, verse 53. When they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized Jesus and ran about the whole region and began to bring sick people on their beds to wherever they heard that he was. Mark chapter 6, verse 54 through 55. And whenever he came in villages and cities or the countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. Countless people were healed merely by touching the fringe of Jesus' garment. From Gennesaret, Jesus walked back to Capernaum, where the people were eager to see him again. Luke says, when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. As Jesus approached Capernaum, he was met by a desperate but well-known dead. Luke said, there came a man named Jairus, who was the ruler of the synagogue, and falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him, to come to his house. Luke chapter 8, verse 41. For he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. As Jesus went, the people pressed around him. Luke chapter 8, verse 42. As the father of four daughters, I can imagine how desperate this man was for Jesus to heal his daughter. But before Jesus could get to the home of the synagogue official, Many people were pressing around him and asking him for help. I have ministered in India where people were pressing into me from all sides. If I prayed too long for someone, the next person would take my hand from the person I was praying for and place it on their head. In this crowd, there was a lady desperate for a touch from Jesus. Luke says there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for twelve years and though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. Luke wants us to make a connection between the two twelves. The age of the girl was twelve, and the lady had suffered for twelve years. No doubt she had endometriosis. Someone listening to me is suffering from endometriosis. Today you're going to be healed. Reach out and touch Jesus today, and you will be healed. Luke says she came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his garment. Immediately her discharge of blood ceased. Luke chapter 8, verse 44. She felt a change in her body immediately. Many times when I pray for people, they feel a touch from heaven. They may feel heat rising in their body. They may feel a mild electrical current. Recently, I prayed for a lady with cancer, and immediately she felt the presence of God come upon her. Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? And when all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and are pressing in on you. Luke chapter 8, verse 45. Holy men in other religions cannot be touched or touch others. This is why everyone denied that they had touched Jesus. Yet we just discovered that thousands of people were healed by touching Jesus. Why did Jesus want this woman to be identified? Because her disease made her ceremonially unclean, meaning she was excluded from the religious and social life of Capernaum. That was not acceptable to Jesus. So he said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. When the woman saw that she was no longer hidden, 
she came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been healed immediately. Luke chapter 8, verse 46, 47. The lady knew many people had been healed by touching Jesus. What she had to believe was that even though she was unclean, she too could be healed. Someone listening to me believes that Jesus still heals, but you're not sure if you're worthy to be healed by him. This lady proved that Jesus is willing to heal you. Listen to what Jesus said to her, Daughter of Abraham, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Luke chapter 8 verse 48. This is the only person Jesus called by the affectionate term daughter of Abraham, meaning she had been restored to the religious community in Capernaum. The word that Luke chose to use for well is the word zozo. It means to be made whole in every possible way. She had just been declared clean in front of the synagogue official whose job it would have been to keep her out of the synagogue. What a dilemma the man faced. In his view, Jesus was now unclean because he had been touched by an unclean person. Yet his daughter's desperate condition forced him to put aside religion and invite Jesus to enter his home and touch his daughter. I invite you to put religion aside and turn to Jesus for help. He is ready to help you today. Luke says, while he was still speaking, someone from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any more. Luke chapter 8, verse 49. Now his daughter was unclean and could not be touched without causing anyone who touched her to become unclean. Jesus spoke as lovingly to the man as he spoke to the woman. He said to him, Do not fear, only believe, and she will be well. Jesus pronounced that the little girl would be Zozo. Jesus followed Jairus to his home. When they came to the house, he allowed no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the father and the mother. Luke chapter 8 verse 51. Jesus took steps to create an atmosphere of faith and belief. All were weeping and mourning for her, but he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. Luke chapter 8, verse 52. Why did Jesus not allow nine out of the twelve of his own disciples to pray with him for this little girl? Why, for example, was Thomas not invited into this prayer meeting? The deeper question is, would Jesus have wanted you to pray with him for Jairus' daughter? He is looking for people who will partner with him in the exercising of great faith. Jesus not only built an atmosphere of faith, he protected that atmosphere. You see, the people laughed at him, in their minds knowing that she was dead. No one had ever been raised from the dead in Capernaum. So Jesus sent the laughers away, and taking her by the hand, he said, Child, arise. Luke chapter 8, verse 54. Her spirit returned, and she got up at once, and he directed that something should be given to her to eat. Her parents were amazed. These are two very powerful stories. They show us that Jesus is not willing to sacrifice the older generation to reach the next generation. You're not too old to be healed, and you're not too young to be important to Jesus. You're not too poor to be healed nor too rich to not need help from Jesus. Whatever your need is today, Jesus is ready, willing, and able to help you. Perhaps you have a young child whose life is slipping away. I say to your child, arise in the name of Jesus. I call the spirit of your child back to their body. You will live and you will not die. If you are a follower of Jesus, I invite you to become conscious of stewarding the presence of God so that people are healed by touching your clothes or coming in contact with your shadow. Grow in the understanding that when people touch you, they are touching Jesus in you. 
when I travel or speak to large crowds. I invite people who don't wish to tell me what they are suffering from to touch me and ask Father to heal them. If you have a socially embarrassing disease that makes you feel unclean, I say to your disease, go in the name of Jesus. If you feel the presence of God coming upon your body right now, you are being healed and you will know it. The lady in the story was not the first to be healed by touching Jesus. She had faith to believe Jesus would do it for her. Her story tells us that Jesus will do it for you. Let me take a few moments and pray for you. If you're suffering from endometriosis, I command your endometriosis to end right now. Feel the presence of God coming upon you. The lady in the story knew immediately that her bleeding had stopped. You're suffering from a social disease. I come against that disease in the name of Jesus. No matter how you contracted it, whether you know or don't know, whether you did things you knew you shouldn't have done, whatever happened to you, I call the shame out of your life. I release you in the name of Jesus, and I command your disease to go. If you feel unqualified to be healed, I break off that lie. Father loves you, and he wants to restore you, daughter and son, into the kingdom of God. If you have a child on their deathbed right now, pray for your child. I say, child, come alive now in Jesus' name. I break fever. I break infection. I break cancer. I break tumors in the name of Jesus. Come alive right now. If you are a follower of Jesus, I encourage you to believe that your touch or your shadow can heal people. God wants to do through you what he did for these special women in the New Testament. If you receive Jesus as your Savior or were healed while listening to this message, write to me and we will send you more information to help you grow as a follower of Jesus. To hear more episodes of this podcast, or uplifting messages and inspiring stories, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join us next week for another episode of Living Hope Podcasts.